Community Baptist Church. Pastor William D. May. Good morning, my Christian friends, my sisters and brothers. Giving honor to Almighty God, who first in all of our lives. I'm glad to be able to come before you again in the name of the great I Am. Truly, God has been good to all of us, and I want to take time to say hallelujah and thank you, Jesus. God has been so good to us. I love the Lord, and I'm going to use for a topic today, this is Father's Day, and I want to use for a topic today, my topic would be, Fathers step up to the plate. And a subtopic, don't wait too late. You got a duty to perform. If what you do in the dark will come to the light. These children you see running around want to know who their father is. A lot of them have to go different places to try to find out who their father is. But you know if you will interact with the lady, then if you're uncertain, that is not yours. Go to Jerry Springer. He'll let you know. He got a little saying, you are not the father, or you are the father. All this gonna come back and haunt you one day if you don't do what you're supposed to, to do. We got a good word today and something that inspired me really good. Commercials is really good on television. They make good commercials uh, between the shows to show us different things. But one that really caught my attention. There was two little boys were coming down the street, one from one way and one coming from the other. And they looked and saw one another, one was white and one was black. And they threw both of their hands up in the air and started running to each other. Watch the TV, you will see that commercial. And just hug one another. Those little boys didn't see no color. All they see was they go a friend. But as they grow older, we as old folks put stuff in our children that cause them to become prejudiced and biased to us. But God is still looking at all of this We have been singing songs, preaching sermons, shouting, praising God, saying hallelujah, trusting in his faith, shouting all over the place, shouting the house down. We will keep doing that until Jesus comes. But if our house is not in order, all our shouting and all our crying will be in vain. All our good deeds we have done will be in vain. I'm going to talk to you today from a very important scripture. You know, as I'm talking to fathers, I was just thinking about People love to be great. And all these shows coming on television, you know, and we have to get us another type of service. And that service has got Andy Griffin on it. It's got Leave It to Bieber on it. All these old shows with the father figure on it. Raffle Man, the old time shows when I was a boy is on television right now. 
that's teaching us how to train and teach our children how to be outstanding in the world today. If you take time with them and teach them, you can make good stewardess, good preachers, good teachers out of our children. Children learn by people teaching them. Leave it to Beeble and Wally. Oh, those are my great shows. Andy Griffin and Opie. Opie was trying to help an old man out, an old man was just pimping Opie just to get food to eat. But Andy went and looked at this old man and said, Opie, take us to this old man. Let's see, can't we help him? And y'all won't have to be stealing out of the houses and giving it to them. They were playing the Robin Hood game. Taken from the rich, given to the poor. They were playing a good game, but it was something in behind it. Them little boys, whenever Andy asked him a question and said, tell me the truth. He told him exactly what they was doing on all the little boys. Now, when you go to, I, I, I'm, I'm a witness. You got three children in this society to show you how things are changing. You go to them and ask them, who took that cookie, those cookies off that table and out of that jar? And then you looking in their face and one say, I didn't do it. Another say, I didn't do it. And another say, I didn't do it. Well, somebody did it. I admire the way Opie opened up and told the truth. A lot of other children get spanking in the house because sometimes as I was a father bringing my children up, if one went on up, everybody get a spanking. It's not good to let somebody get a spanking for something you done. Cause when you stand before God, ain't nobody gonna have to answer for you. You have to answer for yourself. You're not gonna sit there and say, brother so-and-so done it and made me do it. It ain't gonna work. Cause God got a word for you. Depart from me. I know you're not. Your work is of iniquity. God got it. He got it because he know everything. We don't know which one is guilty, but God knows. I want to take my time here. Another thing that bothers me, when Jesus was on the mountain of transfiguration, He took Peter, James, and John up with him and had a little consultation with Moses and Elijah. And you know the story. If you don't, I, I might need to read that to you. Let's go to Matthew. Let, let's, just, let's, let's, just, let's just go to it. Give me a minute to go to it because you will think I just said that myself because I ain't saying nothing that's not in the word of God. Hey boy, hallelujah. Come on here now, let's get this thing right. Just give me a little time. I want you to hear it. Let's go back to Matthew. Let me read it to you. Because I'm reading out of the King James Virgin Bible. This is, this is the word of God. And while he was up there on that mountain, having a conversation, I see a round table meeting with these two fellas, Jesus was, Peter, James, and John were watching on and the other disciples down in the bay. And they're complaining about who is the greatest into the kingdom among these people. Who's gonna be the greatest in the kingdom? From the 18th chapter in the first verse, and the same 
time came the disciples to Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus said, a little, set a little, called a little child to him and set him on in the midst of them. And he said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, you shall no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is great in the kingdom of heaven. You got to understand, we got to humble ourselves. How many times you got in a situation where you had to humble yourself, control your spirit, control yourself without this blind up? Because if you split up, you're just as worse as the one you're talking to. Don't let nobody mess up your spirit. Now let me move back to my lesson. Talking about the day of Pentecost. The Pentecost experience. My service sermon coming from at the second chapter beginning at the first verse. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house which they were sitting. And the apart and the appeared to them as close a tongue like as a fire and it sat up on each of them and there was people after Jesus had went to the cross and was crucified raised up by his master his father in heaven he walked through the city and through the countryside, heard it there about 50 some odd days before he ascended to glory. So people looked at him, but nobody had seen God and nobody had seen the Holy Spirit. They could not come on the scene at the same time. It's too much power if the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit would hit him one time, it would bust this world wide open. They took their own time to come. God Almighty created the world and everything that was with them sitting, looking on, waiting, because they know that we was a hot mess, that we were going to mess up. He knew it. So Jesus, all right, if he mess up, I'll redeem him. I'll go down. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost said, well, if you go down, I got to play my part. I will keep go down and keep them if they want to be careful. There was people from everywhere when they heard that the Holy Spirit was going to come down. They did not know how he was going to come down, but before they came down, and it was called the day of Pentecost. So when it come down, people from all nations, continents of all over the world were sitting there waiting for the Holy Ghost to come. That's just like we're going to be doing today. Jesus told us that he was coming again. Now you can sit down and play around all you want and sneak around all you please. He said he was coming. And if he tell you, if it's in the word of God, I'm a believer. It is right. One day he will crack the sky like the Holy Spirit come down in the room where they was all sitting and filled the house. 
All the people's outside looking around. Now, I do not have the time of day or night that the Holy Ghost might have come, but reading the scriptures, I drew my conclusion. They said, Peter said, these people's outside, they said it's too early in the morning for us to be drunk, as y'all proclaim. Hallelujah, glory to God. So it tells me that sometime in the morning time, that the Holy Spirit walked in on them, come down as a mighty rushing wind, and fill the house. People start talking in tongues, hallelujah, and languages, and all this kind of stuff, and people are amazed, but they could not understand the Holy Spirit. We can hardly understand it now, but that is a powerful voice. After you have received the Holy Ghost, God will give you power to walk up to any unclean thing and tell them, get out of these people. All Jesus done whenever he was at the grave site, he didn't say, come out. He did not have to wrestle with them and throw them down and, and kick on them and blow and spit all over them. He didn't have to do that. All they said was, in the gathering country, come out. The man was blind on the master's road. Oh, hallelujah. He was blind on the Jericho road. That's it. He, he was blind. And Jesus was coming by. And he was standing hollering to Jesus, telling Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Hallelujah. How many more get in trouble today? the Lord have mercy on me. He was hollering and Jesus stopped and he got his attention. Other folk trying to make him shut up. But if anybody tried to shut you up when you call them Jesus, rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. Rebuke them. Rebuke them. Jesus stopped and looked. What? Why are you making all this noise? Prayer praise and why are you making all this noise? Out here, I heard the crowd and somebody said, but Jesus, the son of man. Look at that, look at that. That's it. That's all you got to do is believe. That's all you got to do is believe to receive. Hallelujah. He believed and he received his sight. Man, ain't that beautiful? But all these people were waiting for the Holy Spirit to come down. And all of a sudden, they something come like a tornado, like a mighty rushing wind. Woo, woo, and the devil was so powerful, there ain't no hurricane could have been no powerful. No tornado, no thunderstorm. Yes, my Christian friend. But what if they wouldn't have been waiting? Sometimes don't wait too late. They come from all types of countries because they had to take it back, the Holy Spirit. They had to take it back to their country and tell the people about what happened. That's why the gospel is spread it all over the world. All kinds of languages that they're talking and some we don't even understand, but at the end of the conversation, here's something about Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. I'm getting ready to close now because this is so, so awkward, seem like, but nevertheless, I want to let you know, don't wait too late. Father, get up to your, get, stand up to your duties as men and do the right thing. May God bless you all and may heaven smile on you. I love you and God love you too. Even sinners as saints. God love you. And we'll see you again in the near future. And have a wonderful day.
9161 Tartan Road of Lawnberg is where our church is located and on the side of our church we have a food pantry and we ask for donation to help us put in a, a flat so we can the truck can bring us food. Me and the wife was buying the food at 19 cents a pound for about seven, eight years. And we've been paying the bill what looked like the church would help us. But Psalm 41, you need to take your time and read it. Those that cater to the poor, feed the hungry, visit the sick. God will bless you with a long life. God will take care of you. Now one thing I do not do, and I will not do, I will not beg. Because I know God only carries us upon a thousand people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He only carries us upon a thousand people. And heaven and earth belong to him. But we got peoples here that can help. Us are with this food pantry. Right now we're getting it free, but it's going to be charged again. We have no 501 3C. We don't have it. We just doing it because the Lord, when I come out of work from Camel Soup, Lord said, well, stop, don't sit down, keep working. So I'm keep I'm keeping on working. And I'm working that food pantry trying to feed people, and we feed just a multitude of people. God has still got it flowing all this time. But if you can send anything to help us in this food pantry, hallelujah, send it. Because you're not only helping us, you have all the people that come and pick up food from the pantry. We have the cash app, and it will be on your stream. And you can look on there if you want to send it that way. You can send it if you want to mail it. 9161 Harden Road. Your check or your donation would be greatly appreciated. Your check come back to you, you'll find out it will be deposited into the hands of love, food pantry. That's to help the gospel continue moving. Now I see a lot of people on TV asking for thousands of dollars. If you have 10 of y'all send thousands of a thousand dollars, what the Lord can do. Well, it's good to sow seeds. It really is. But I don't want to put a charge on nobody. I want you to use your heart. What God asks you to do, do it. If he don't ask you to do nothing, don't do it. Okay? Thank you for listening to us today. But do what you can to help us. In the hands of love and friends. God bless and hallelujah. Thanks for watching. God bless. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.